This one's for you smaller creators who try to make their way into the big social media world in, you know, 2019, the rest of 2018. And if you're actually waiting for some tips like, well, use five hashtags or, you know, use the new close friends list to put everyone in your list in order to get your stories more visible, you've come to the wrong place here because, you know, while these tips are real tips, by the way, and thanks for Mila <laughs> for the last tip, it's actually really interesting, but we're not gonna talk about these things today because those things just touch the surface. That's, that's just some surface level shit. Because in this video, we're gonna talk about the real things, the things that go to the core that you absolutely need to know. Because if you boil it down to some things, there's just some things that you just have to, you know, be aware, at least. Anyway, let's get going. Um, back from Barcelona. Anyway, it's cold. I hate it. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Dominic. Usually, I talk about social media marketing advice about building up your personal brand which is something that we're going to talk about in today's video and you know lots of the times when i'm out and about and you know I talk to people lots of them ask me you know how do i actually get started how what, what do i have to do to you know make the jump in order to i don't know be able to travel be able to you know do whatever i want be able to just you know wake up whenever i want to and you know pursue the dreams that i have pursue my creative uh, my creative endeavors by the way if you're new here you should actually consider hitting that subscribe button this beautiful look at subscribe button down below because you know here we're gonna do the real talk we're not gonna do some rehashing but we're gonna get into that later so the first thing that i want to give you all people in there you know on your way is to actually and if you watch my videos you probably heard it lots of times already but still wanted to say it one more time don't overthink it and just put it out you know whenever you have some sort of things some sort of content you know especially when starting out you're gonna be like ah this you know the, the, the blue tones are a little bit too weird you know my hair looks weird well went to the hairdresser still not <laughs> better anyway see just put it out because in my opinion you know bad content or bad ish content is still better than no content at all because you know content is what drives the people content is what makes people get interested in you content is actually what it's all about right so if you only have bad content in your opinion you just put it out anyway of course there's some bad content that you should not put out at all and I'm pretty sure you know what that is. You know, if it's just some weird, if it's just bad content, you know, just don't put it out. Uh, if you want to know what bad content is, I might have some profile review videos. We might have some people in there with bad content. You know, just you know, click through them. But you know, if you're thinking, okay, it's not, it's not top level quality. You know, just still put it out because it's just in our blood to actually always strive for better content, and that's just a good thing. You know, but still, this good thing sometimes takes us back, holds us back from putting it out at all. So if you're like, okay, this is only 80% of what I should do or should have done, still put it out. And of course, because you've watched my other videos, you know that already. The thing that I actually wanted to say is try to get your foot in the whole social media world you know, with one specific niche. You know, take one thing that you're particularly interested in, plant the seed, put your foot in the door, and grow from that, right? You know, in today's world, social media becomes bigger and bigger every time, every day, pretty much. And, you know, it's getting a little bit more complicated with each day to actually get your foot in the door and whatever need. So if you just want to be some sort of mainstream you know, blogger or some mainstream vlogger, mainstream Instagrammer, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna work anymore. Or at least it's not gonna work as you know, easy anymore as with other things. What you want to do is take a specific niche, focus on that one, plant the seed and grow from there. You know, take your small, it doesn't matter how small the community is, not at all. You know, it can't be some really weird, to be honest, you know, because the internet, we know that there's some weird people out there. And you know, if you're weird, I'm weird, I tell you that. I found lots of weird people that share the weirdness with me. So don't be afraid of that. If you think the niche that you want to go into is kind of saturated already, doesn't matter, man, <laughs> you know? It's still you after all being the creator, right? It's still you being the unique person behind it. And don't tell me that you're not a unique person, right? Everyone is unique in some sort of sense. Some people like those kinds of people more. Some people like those kinds of people more. That's just the way it is. But still, you're kind of unique. I don't want to sound like a weird rant of all those weird motivational people, which by the way should be another point. Don't, you know, don't let yourself get too carried away by those, you know, motivational people that have not done anything except for motivating right and they did it whatever we're gonna do a whole nother video about that by the way if this 
this video is kind of all over the place. So what I actually wanted to say is stick to a very specific kind of topic at the beginning. You know, you can grow and expand as you know, you get more popular on the internet, but stick to a specific thing at the beginning. It's way easier for people to actually find you as if you have some very, very, uh, you know, specific stuff to find, right? As opposed to, you know, Photoshop tips. No one's gonna find you. Um, for example, when I talk to people and they ask me what I do and I'm like, yeah, I have a, a marketing agency, but we're specifically focused just on Instagram. That's all that we do. Most of the people are like, what? You can actually survive with that? Guess what? Not that yet, so it's, it's kind of going okay, I guess. <laughs> Next, very important tip in my opinion that I actually don't see anywhere else being talked about is that to watch out to not get caught in this whole response loop as I call it. And what I wanna say with that is, of course, if you're starting out especially, um, you're gonna get some sort of inspiration from all these other Instagrammers, YouTubers. I don't know what you wanna go with, LinkedIners? Nah, MySpacers. Unfortunately, not anymore. So what I wanted to say is it's good to get inspired by all these kinds of different people But be aware that you could get trapped in this whole response loop where just one person takes an idea the, All the other part of people uh -huh, All the other people take this idea, you know put their own kind of twist to it And then it's all big a circle circle jerk as I like to call it and you know things just don't innovate anymore And everyone is just talking about the same things and you know no one actually he thinks outside the box anymore, you know? And this is what happens a lot on the internet. And as a result of that, people are afraid of actually, you know, they see all, for example, they see all these YouTubers talking about, you know, personal branding, for example, in this one specific kind of way. For example, there's Gary V. He talks about this one thing, and there's all the other people jumping on that bandwagon and taking us, you know, because they're like, yeah, this is Gary V. And we're gonna take this, put our own kind of spin on it, and that's it. But still, all these other ideas just spring from the grain of, uh, you know, Gary V's idea. And I'm gonna you know, make a video about Gary Vee in, in the very future about some things that I actually kind of disagree with him. Especially in the internet these days, lots of people are actually afraid to have a different opinion. Because on the internet right now, it kind of seems very difficult to have a healthy disagreement anymore, in my opinion. There's either A or B. And if, you know, if you're not within the popular opinion, people are gonna smash you for that. You know, they're gonna bring you down for that. Another advice that I wanna give you, my friends, is just don't let that bother you, right? There's people, I'm pretty sure in the comments, there's people gonna say, you talk way too much, fucking asshole. You know, get straight to the point. The next thing coming right from that um, is actually take advice on the internet with a grain of salt. You have to be really careful what you believe. Always when you have some sort of, including me, by the way. So always when you get some sort of advice, take a step back and try to reflect on that. What are they really trying to say? Why are they trying to say it? Does it actually even work for me? Because you know, all the advice out there always comes from the viewpoint of the person giving the advice, right? For example, me, what I talk about is only the things that you know, happen directly to me. What I say could be totally different for you and that's not a bad thing because you know, life is different, you know, the path is different for everyone and that's, that's good that way. That's just life, you know? And you know, coming from the point before where I talked about you know, people just taking, for example, Gary Vee's advice, rehashing it, and you know, this all being, becoming this whole circle jerky thing, you know. Um, I actually noticed that myself, and I might have deliberately put out some, you know, wrongish information in one or two videos of myself to actually see who actually picks that up. And there's some people that you would not even believe that picked up my kind of, it's not both, but let's just say it's some stretch reality. In the future, I'm gonna make a video about this. Um, but you know, just to let you know, be careful who you take advice from. Even be careful when you take advice from me, you know? Cause you never know. And the last very important tip for all of you people starting out there is to not get too carried away by these numbers. You wouldn't believe how many emails I get a day from people asking, oh, why am I shadow banned? I'm shadow banned, what can I do? Like my life depends on it. When they have like three legs less than usually on their posts. Most of the times it's just a natural thing and especially in times like these where Instagram actually just likes to cut engagement in half just for the sake of it. But still, don't get too carried away from it. Instead of focusing all that thing, like, oh, I'm shadow banned, what can I do? You know, first of all, probably your content just sucks. Because most of the people that write me, their content just sucks, or at least a picture that has less engagement. Just tell you how it is. And other than that, just take your time, take your energy, and trying to interact with your audience, trying to build relations 
with the people that should be giving you the engagement, right? Because people forget that. It's not just the phone and the app, and if you put these values in, you get these values back, right? It's not mathematical things, it's not science. Kind of science, but not real science, if you know what I'm saying. Behind, there's people. There's lots of people taking a look, offering their own time, their, their valuable free time uh, to actually check out your content, to actually interact with you. That's why it should be a back and forth. You should give them something in terms of quality, in terms of whatever they want, in terms of whatever your um, you know, niche is, and then you expect something back, right? And you know, it's always easy to blame the algorithm. It's always easy to blame the shadow ban still. If you don't build meaningful interactions, if you don't build meaningful relationships online, it won't work at all. Cause you know, as time prog progresses and I'm calling it right now, 2019 is gonna be the year that things are going to get a lot more real in terms of social media, you know? People are fed up by all these. Uh, look at me go traveling all day long and I'm, I don't know I get all these packages sent to me because I'm an influencer and stuff like that There's more to it than that and people are gonna you know cut through the bull people are gonna notice that people are gonna Be way more likely to follow you if they see the real person behind if there's some real things You know cuz there's always up and downs, you know got carried away again But what I actually wanted to say is you know don't focus too much on your followers, you know um, to, especially when trying to you know, become some sort of influencer, a term that I actually hate, uh, to work with brands. Because my experience, my professional experience actually, um, I notice more and more that you know big brands don't care too much about the followers. I mean, they kind of do. But for example, for example, you have a meme page with 5 million followers and okay engagement. But you're like, your content's like all over the place. There's no person behind. That's just a, a shell. Uh, but there's 5 million people, right? Still gonna be a little bit interesting to some advertisers, but um, for example, you're probably not as valuable to some uh, companies as, for example, a Instagrammer with 5,000 followers who's in a very, very specific kind of niche with you know lots of people that interact with him, right? So the 5K person might be even more valuable than a 5 million person uh, account. You know, just so that you kind of grasp the idea. And of course, what I noticed uh, in my you know, experience is brands look way more for quality content than for followers. And they look for engagement. They look for real stuff, right? They look for, you know, there's always a back and forth. Like between the audience and you, between your viewers, between your you know followers and you, there's also gonna be the brand in the middle at some points. And of course, you don't want to hurt that whole thing. But actually, I'm getting too carried away again because we're talking about you know, beginner tips. Well, I'm getting really carried away because I'm actually overworked right now. But just for you, just for all of you guys. So to get this whole thing summed up, don't get carried away too much by numbers. Build real relationships. Just put out the things and um, write, use five to 10 hashtags. That's a tip that actually works. Just try it out and it's probably what you all came for. <laughs> My name is Dominic. Uh, I usually talk about you know, social media marketing. I usually talk about building a personal brand. I usually don't have as much as a headache as I have right now because it's really bad. Uh, talk to you in a couple of days. I'm trying to up my, you know, uploads again. You know, once I'm done with all this. Bye. <laughs> oh man, I'm not drunk, by the way. I'm not high. Not yet.